so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So first of all, uh, uh, I, I am very uh, proud to be here. Uh, but I do have a request. I every time I make, I give a talk, I make this request. Please, as I go on with my presentation, don't snore. <laughs> you might wake up the person next to you. Right. Uh, I've been asked to talk about um, what the Bronx was like in 1846, not 1845 or 1847, 1846. <laughs> All right. So today, the Bronx is part of the great metropolis of New York City. Uh, it is covered with paved streets that are filled with thousands of automobiles and trucks. Uh, millions of people live in apartment houses and shop in local stores and travel by subway and bus. But the Bronx didn't always look this way. Come back with me to the year 1846 and see what the Bronx was like then. In 1846, most of the Bronx was farmland. Farmers raised cattle to sell to sell milk, cheese, and meat. They also raised fruits and vegetables. They sold their goods in New York City, then only on Manhattan Island. There were a few scattered small villages among the farms. The largest of these was the village of Westchester, east of the Bronx River, where Tremont Avenue crosses Westchester Avenue today. The second largest village was West Farms, near the southern end of what is today the Bronx Zoo. Another small village was located at the western end of today's Kingsbridge Road and was called Kings Bridge. Linking them together was a few small local dirt roads. Kingsbridge Road was one of these. But things were rapidly changing in the Bronx in 1846. Only five years earlier, Jordan L. Mott built an iron foundry at 3rd Avenue in the Harlem River. It was the first modern factory building in the Bronx. He purchased the land he named Mothaven, and he tried to attract more industries there. Along the ridge in the western part of the Bronx, the Croton Aqueduct was under construction to bring a steady water supply to New York City. Part of that project was the building of a high bridge over the Harlem River to carry the water pipes across. At the same time, the first railway was built in the Bronx. It was called the New York and Harlem River Railroad. Today, it is the Harlem Division of Metro North. It, is, it followed a route along today's Park Avenue and built its very first station on the mainland in the middle of a number of farms. Since that area had once been called Fordham, the railroad was named the station Fordham. Also at the same time, the Catholic Bishop John Hughes established the first college ever to be opened in the Bronx. He called it St. John's College. Today it is called the Board of University. He brought in Jesuit fathers to form the faculty to teach the students. All this activity had a profound effect. The Bronx was then only a part of Westchester County. Originally, most of the people lived east of the Bronx River. With the coming of the railroad and industry and the construction of the college and the aqueduct, more people poured into the area west of the Bronx River. A new village began to develop around the Fordham Station. A general store and a hotel opened near it. Most of today's Bronx was located in what was then the town of Westchester. But the rapid rise in population caused the town to be divided. In 1846, the villages and farms west of the Bronx River became the town of West Farms. John Valentine owned a farm on a hill on either side of Kingsbridge Road, west of the new station and of the emerging village. On the slope, there were several small cottages to house the farmhands. Now he thought he could make more money by renting the cottages to people who wanted to live in the new village. One of those people was Edgar Allan Poe. In 1846, the well-known author and poet moved to the open farmland in a last attempt to try to save his life from dying of tuberculosis. Unfortunately, the attempt failed. He rented one of the cottages for $100 a year. But Poe continued to live at the cottage. He 
He frequently visited St. John's College to use its library and to talk to the Jesuits. He used the railroad to travel to New York City to see his friends and publishers. Some of his friends came to visit him in his cottage. He walked around the open fields and woods to explore. He used some of the things he saw in the poems and stories he wrote while living in Fordham. There was no post office in Fordham. If anyone wrote a letter to him, he had to walk down the long dirt roads of the village of West Farms to get to the nearest post office. But because of the railroad, it was more convenient for him if people wrote to him using the New York City post office. Very little remains to remind us of what the Bronx was like in 1846. One of those places is the Edgar Allan Poe Cottage. It is certainly worthwhile to go in and to see what it's like to live in those long ago times. The cottage is open today. It closes at 4 o'clock. If you have an opportunity today and you can't come back, by all means, take the opportunity to go inside and see what it was like to live here at Lads and Good Allen Poe in 1846. If you do live in the neighborhood and you haven't been to the cottage yet, Please take the opportunity. It will also be open tomorrow afternoon. So you're here. Enjoy the Poe Park and all the facilities that are here now. Thank you very much.